We're going to get to some new details about a RICO case involving the Mexican Mafia to catch our viewers up to speed on who's being charged and what their connection to the group is. We're joined by legal affairs journalist Megan Cuniff. Megan, always good to see you. Uh, just start here by breaking it down a bit. Uh, the history, the reputation of this Mexican Mafia and how well known they are to Southern California. Yeah, the Mexican Mafia started in the California prison system. The state and federal prison system is where this thing grew. And uh, it's alleged in this pretty major racketeering conspiracy indictment that they have controlled the drug trade in the Los Angeles County jails. And it, it involves activity really throughout Southern California into Northern California prisons and jails, and then also some federal facilities. And uh, one person who's charged, and this is a retrial of a lawyer who's actually accused of helping them, of basically being a lawyer for the Mexican mafia. He went on trial back in August uh, 2022, and there was a hung jury. He was tried alone, and the jury couldn't reach a decision on guilt or not guilty, and now this is his retrial, but they're going to be trying him alongside some others, including the alleged leader of this uh, drug trade in the jail, who's actually a, a full fledged member of the Mexican mafia, Jose uh, Landa Rodriguez, his nickname is Fox. So this is scheduled to happen in October here in Los Angeles, and prosecutors have been filing motions, uh, getting ready for the trial. There's uh, going to be a, a dismissal hearing related to the lawyer's case that um, I, 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 th I think his side is, is, is hopeful that they're going to get some traction on that. But if not, uh, this is scheduled for trial in October. I do want to get to today's update. Prosecutors announcing that they're trying to get an anonymous jury. Why is that? Yes, they're saying with all the publicity on that, on this case already, and just the nature of the Mexican mafia, that they, uh, they're they worried about uh, finding jurors willing to serve on this, who, who are worried about having their information exposed. So their motion did cite just the extensive press coverage. This is received. Um, there, there weren't any specific incidents of jurors being threatened in the previous trial that we've heard about, but I think that's what prosecutors are saying there. They're trying to get ahead of. I guess next, I'd like to know a little bit more about this anonymous jury. What does that even mean? Is there protocols in place where a judge is going to allow what can and can't be said inside of that courtroom? Yeah, we we saw this in uh, Donald Trump's New York State trial that just happened where uh, the identities of the jurors aren't going to be revealed in open court proceedings. They're going to be uh, referred to through through numbers, and there won't be any way for somebody who's sitting in on these court proceedings to ever get any access to their identity or information, which typically in, in federal court, there isn't something in a, in a public court file identifying the jurors, but it usually is possible to sit in on jury selection and hear names and, and, and that kind of thing and, and put together identities. But there would be a, a process in place where they're completely anonymized through that. When we say complete anonymity, are we also saying that the attorneys are not going to know who the jury is, the judge? Is this just the public that's not going to be allowed that access? It, it would be the, uh, the, the public that they're definitely concerned about. I'd have to read more into everything that they're proposing here, but the public is, uh, you, you know, the that, that's that's what they're really looking at is public anonymity. Um, the possibility, you know, that the jurors' names would become public and expose them uh, could be a, a form of intimidation and harassment. So they are, they're saying that they have a few factors in favor of that. You did just cite that case in the trial featuring former President Donald Trump over in New York where we saw a similar situation. The jury's identity was supposed to remain hidden. Uh, but still, we were a privy to some details out of that case. So how does this kind of go going forward with this jury selection process? Does this take even longer, perhaps, than just selecting a jury in the standard normal way? Yeah, I think uh, wh whatever happens, I would imagine that the jury pool that they end up calling for this case will be bigger than uh, th than usual because they have to account for the for the publicity. And then I 
do you think the trial is going to be lengthy enough that they're going to get what they call in federal court a time qualified panel? So they're going to first screen people to find jurors who are able to serve for such a lengthy trial here. So there's a, a, a multi-step process that will happen here. Uh, Megan, as you always do, you're always keeping your followers updated on all of these trials and cases that you follow on social media. I'd like to pull up a tweet from you here uh, with the full filing. So this you posted on X. Which factor or factors do you think carry the most weight when it comes to keeping the jurors' identities private? I think probably the 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 nature of the case and the or the 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 publicity that the that the case is. Uh, it, it, it is getting and they're uh, saying in their motion that the the court can provide some kind of reasonable safeguards to minimize potential prejudice and they're saying that there's there's prejudice that could arise from you know jurors being intimidated or, or fearful that their identity is going to be going to be present here so um it, you know it's just going to be going to be up to the judge i haven't seen too many anonymous juries around around los angeles federal court but I also haven't seen too many Mexican mafia trials around Los Angeles federal court. So I think those are all be factors that will come into consideration. You know, and that's what I was going to ask, Megan. When was the last time that you remember about a case in which jurors were severely intimidated or even worse? Can, can we even think of a particular case? Um, uh, off the top of my head, I have not seen an example of that in, in cases that I've covered. But we've, we'd have, of, of course, heard about different issues around the country. I mean, it, it, it does happen and it, it it does come up. So I think the prosecutors are just trying to be, uh, you know, look, looking ahead and just trying to look at all factors to, to safeguard things. And it will be interesting to see the defense response to this because of course the defense can can reply in, in opposition and explain and we'll, we'll see what the judge decides. Okay, so perfect segue to this next question. I mean, who would be opposed to this given the fact that this organization, the Mexican Mafia, I mean, presumably very dangerous, is there a chance that the defense would reject this motion to keep the jury private? I think the defense would definitely argue that it's prejudicial to the defense for the jurors to be basically ha have a measure up front that shows that they could be in danger, that this is a dangerous organization and that the defendants on trial could do something to them. I think I think the, there's an easy argument for the defense to make that that's prejudicial upfront to the defense and that there's no reason that the there's no evidence of, of jurors being threatened or of anything like that. So I, I, I would expect that argument to be made, but um, the prosecution did cite one example in the first trial for the lawyer of uh, somebody in the gallery was recording a uh, informant's testimony in, in clear violation of the rules. So they have, they have that. So it's nothing juror related, but they do have some unusual circumstances that they're able to point to. But I would imagine the argument for that this is prejudicial to the defense is going to be pretty strong. Okay, Megan, and one final point that I would like you to comment on. Uh, apparently, you have played a part in why uh, this jury could be anonymous going forward. And taking a look here at a tweet, uh, so the prosecution citing your reporting of the case as a reason why the jury should be anonymous. How different are legal trials now in the era of social media and court reporters like yourself? I think this is an example of prosecutors being aware of that and and recognizing that and you know pointing out that I have over 120,000 followers on Twitter. So I I think they're just using this to underscore their argument about all the publicity that the case is getting and that there are reporters with large audiences who are covering it in real time. Of course, there's no allegation in there that I was I I identifying jurors or or, or tweeting about jurors specifically, but. Of course, they're not saying I was. They're just using this as an example of the large audience that this trial has and that this case has. All right, Megan, we're going to have to leave it at that. Always when we bring you in to discuss all of these cases and trials that you're following, there are so many different nuggets of information that we need to catch up on just to get the full scope on what we may see going forward. Megan Kuhn, if they're legal affairs journalist, of course, we look forward to checking in with you soon. Thanks so much.